Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and success strategies. Hello, I am Michael Bull. Thank you for being with us. Our segment today is brought to you by BOMI, B-O-M-I dot org. They are the ultimate in facilities and property management training. Visit BOMI dot org. Well, today we're going to talk about industrial real estate, warehouse, flex space. And I think everyone is excited about industrial because of, you know, online sales, right? It's growing everywhere. And industrial has been doing well. There's also been uh, more spec space. As I talk to developers and, see, and look at the market, there's uh, more spec space than I've seen in the past because industrial developers seem to be fairly conservative in nature, but we're seeing a lot of spec. But, uh, well, let's see what's going on. We're going to talk to an economist about that tracks the market about how performance is, how cap rates are, and how things are kind of performing around the country. Uh, we'll also talk to a developer and get his take that is building spec and see what he talks about uh, and shares with us today. Let's start with Barbara Denham. Barbara is senior economist with Reese, and they track the commercial real estate market. She's joining us on the phone. Barbara, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, Barbara, how are industrial properties uh, performing around the country? Are things just still going great? Uh, they are going great as of the third quarter. Uh, there's a bit of a correction in the industrial market in the first two quarters. We saw uh, continued strong construction, but net absorption or occupancy growth was positive but slower. So in other words, a year from now, I was calling this the MVP of the commercial real estate world. It had strong occupancy growth, strong rent growth, and then there's a little bit of a slow deceleration, let's say. It's not, it wasn't a slowdown. It was a deceleration in the occupancy growth. So vacancy rates picked up a lot because, as you mentioned, there's a lot of speculative construction going on. Um, but they only picked up a very little bit for two quarters. And then the third quarter, it was kind of a return to uh, the very strong, robust growth we saw last year. I think what we saw in the numbers was that the trade war concerns put a little bit of a hesitancy in the market for, say, um, you know, lessors uh, taking on more space in the first couple quarters. But then by the third quarter, I think the trades, the numbers, and the, the demand was just so much that everyone resumed where they had been six months prior. Okay. And what's that doing to rental rates, Barbara? Well, uh, likewise, we saw a little slowdown in rent growth in the first two quarters, but uh, still positive. Um, usually, last year, the rent growth was over 1.2% per quarter, so it was over 5% for the year. Um, that slowed down to 0.4% in the second quarter, and but it, re again, returned to 0.8% in the third quarter, so it was much stronger uh, in the third quarter. So things seemed to be kind of back to where they were last year. Okay. And when you look at new supply, Barbara, um, does it jump out as being normal for kind of historic numbers? Or are we seeing more new supply than we've maybe ever seen? Oh, it's definitely higher than we've ever seen. Um, much, uh, the, I mean, 2017 was higher than 2016, which was higher than 2015. 2018 is looking to be higher than 2017 by the end of the year. And 2019 looks pretty darn strong as well. Maybe not quite as strong as this year, but then we see a bit of a slowdown in 2020. Um, it's hard to track future construction for the industrial sector because um, the time it takes to build an industrial building is much uh, shorter than, say, an apartment building or an office building. So, you know, someone can file a permit and have a building built in nine months. So it's hard to look forward and say, oh, you know, there's not as many permits out, so there won't be as much construction. Um, that That's just not the case because, again, it, it, the turnaround is so quick. Um, but we still see very, very strong construction this year and next. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. I think we're about to bring some industrial property for, on the market that's never been on the market. And I think it's in an area where somebody's going to want to build you know, right away and it's never been available before. And, and, and you're right, that could come up uh, maybe toward the end of of 2019. So what's that doing to cap rates? It seems like when we're we're marketing industrial properties, the, the larger the better, but the, the cap rates seem to be still compressed. What are you seeing overall? Uh, yeah, cap rates have been in the 
7.1 to 7.7 percent range, so not a lot of volatility in the overall uh, industrial sector cap rate trend, unlike, you know, the apartment in the office market where you see a little bit more volatility. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a solid sector, and, uh, you know, the investor interest is very strong. Sales volume has been very strong. Uh, it, it's kind of increased every year. Last year it was over $44 billion. The last, prior year it was uh, $38 billion, and then prior to that it was $34 billion. So it's definitely on pace to see about a 40 to $45 billion uh, volume of sales that we're tracking. So it's a, it's a very good market. Um, yeah. Almost every – what we're also finding is almost every single submarket, at least in the third quarter, every submarket – it's showing positive rent growth. So there's really no area where we're saying, oh, there's, there's something to be concerned about here. You know, there's definitely slower rent growth in, say, the Midwest and, like, the Ohio and, and Indiana areas. Um, and even Chicago is not as strong as it had been. But other than that, we're seeing very strong rent growth, especially along both the coasts, like Florida. California markets are, are really, really strong, especially the San Bernardino Riverside metro um, Texas is still very, very strong. So um, so it's definitely a good market to be in right now. Okay. And if you looked at a trend line, if you will, for cap rates uh, in, in this year so far, maybe last year, how are cap rates trending right now? Are you seeing any change there? Yeah, it's a very, very, very slight decline. So it was like an average of about 7.6% last year, and now it's down to about 7.2%. So that's not a dramatic drop. Um, so, but it's still ne- nevertheless a drop. There just hasn't been as much volatility in the cap rates for industrial sector as you know you see in in other markets. Yeah. So, what do you expect moving forward, Barbara, for the industrial market? Well, as long as it, you know, right now the trade war still seems to be like talk. Um, I'm sure some sectors are feeling it more than others, especially like the construction industry with the steel prices and things. But it's still too early to say, oh, you know the 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 drop in exports or the drop in imports will definitely affect um, the industrial sector. It's just too early to determine that because it's still not firm changes in any of the tariffs. It's all just talk. So our, our short-term outlook is still very positive. Certainly the retail sales numbers show that uh, consumers are still buying a lot of goods. And um, so consumer demand is very strong, and the, tr- and the trade statistics and the retail statistics are pretty strong. And I'm looking at both uh, goods, serv- goods trade and services trade. Uh, so it's still on track to stay at the same pace as last year. It's just this, this tariff war issue is still kind of like a, a big question mark. Okay. We're talking with Barbara Denham. She's senior economist with Reese, and we're focusing on industrial real estate. And, and Barbara, you guys separate industrial kind of into flex, I guess, into kind of more warehouse. Where do you see for fluctuations there? It seems like uh, flex is kind of kind of sometimes rolls a little bit with the office market. Um, yeah, flex is not uh, – we don't see as much construction in mm-hmm. flex. Um and as we do in the warehouse distribution, most of what's been built is um, warehouse distribution. People want the bigger, the better. Sometimes even not just the the square footage of the warehouse distribution, but the cubic. Uh, you know, it's higher ceilings, more logistics. Um, so they're, they're, they're seeing very similar patterns. Um, the only difference was in the third quarter. There was a bit of uh, a decline in the flex R&D vacancy rate, whereas the warehouse distribution distribution sector, it was more flat. So I think because they're building more warehouse distribution, the decline in vacancy isn't as sharp. Um, But both of them saw a bit of a slowdown in the first two quarters. Yeah. When you look at the numbers overall, where might there be some opportunities? Are there certain property type sizes or markets that kind of jump out to you? Uh, No. I mean, they're all, like I said, they're all doing uh, reasonably well. Um, our, we're about to roll out a whole new set of submarkets. Like right now, we only cover 48 um, industrial sectors, and we're going to almost we're going to more than double that. Oh. So I think a lot of people are aware of like places where it's tight. I just had a conversation with somebody who was telling me that in Reno, Nevada, which I think is one of our newer markets, there's just no available space. Um, and he was just howling about how you can't lease space in some markets. Most of them are the smaller ones. 
Mm-hmm. So, like, we're going to add uh, Harrisburg and uh, parts of the uh, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. That's a um, kind of a tourist hub that a lot of people aren't really aware of, um, but it, it's got a good intersection of different highways. Uh, so, you know, it's those kind of smaller markets that aren't um, on the on the top of the radar screen uh, that I think probably have a lot of opportunity. Yeah, that's interesting. I was just talking to a foreign investor yesterday, and they're they're saying, "Look, show me some tertiary, show me some secondary markets, because mm-hmm. I really think I can get a, a greater yield there, and still markets that are showing good population growth." And well, Barbara, what would you leave our audience with related to uh, industrial today? Um, I just that our outlook is still very positive. Um, we still see strong occupancy growth and uh, rent growth. And, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a good, safe sector to be in. All right. Well, I'm doing the Snoopy dance, Barbara. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. All right. Well, stay with us. We're going to talk to someone who can give us some insight on the ports because when you look at the ports and what's going on there, it can be an indicator of things to come for a lot of the economy and a lot of commercial real estate and certainly industrial. And as a prominent before, we're gonna have a prominent developer get a view from his desk. Stay with us, I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show.